Do you have any of those hooks for your specific characters? That you go yeah, back I can get you there. In the old days for Rocco, is it? Oh, hey, hey, my, my. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for jumping on with me for a little bit. Yeah, you're Appreciate your time. Uh, you've really defined a lot of my and a lot of people's childhood. And I didn't even realize, didn't realize how many voices you really are managing. Yeah, I've been at it for a while, you know, since basically 1991, the pilot for Rocco and then yeah. then Rocco and Cat Dog and, and Laszlo and Angry Beavers and all kinds of stuff just started to follow. And yeah, when I look back on it, it's been a lot. And unfortunately this year, uh, it's been a good year. You know, we were talking about just before coming on about the, having the booth at home and that helps yeah. a lot of studios when you have your own setup. So yeah, just keep getting roles. You know, you, you get fewer roles than you audition for, that's for sure. I, I've listened to a, a, a few different voice actors talk about their profession recently while uh, preparing for this, but a lot of them talk about uh, hooks that they have to kind of, if they're jumping back into a character, maybe yes. like a line or a phrase that's like, what, what is it? And it's like, oh, oh, that's what it is. And then they can just yeah. grab onto it right away. Do you have any of those hooks for your specific characters that you go yeah, back to? Yeah, I get you there. In the old days for Rocco, it was like, oh, hey, hey, my, my. For... Mr. Crocker, it was Timmy Turner. Okay, I'm there. Um, and then for the Mike Wazowski sound like stuff, I got to play Mike Wazowski in Kingdom Hearts 3. I've done a ton of stuff since 2001. But it was the phrase from the movie I learned how to do Billy Crystal was Forget About Paris. And there's a point where he gets high where he sounds closer to Mike Wazowski. I know you don't have to tell me everything about your life, but can you hit an occasional highlight or two? Like, I got four brothers that are good at wrestling. They got bad ears. And oh, yeah, I'm married. And so whenever I would start to get too muppety on uh, Billy, on uh, Mike Wazowski, I'd go, I'm married, you're married, I'm married, you're married. Okay, I'm back. Here we go, let's go, Sully. And that would put me, and we have like 750 times of me going, you're married. That would put me right back in Mike Wazowski territory. And so if you had to spend quarantine with one of your characters and your long resume going through that IMDb spread, who would you pick? Who could you survive it with? Who would you want go? Rocco okay. just right away, because he's just so Winnie the Pooh. He's just like, oh, I guess we can't go outside today. We'll, we'll make the best of it, right, Spunky? He's he's the calm in the storm. He is so Winnie the Pooh. He just, he's zen. Oh, whatever happens with Rocco is whatever happens. And yeah. that's the type of person you want to be around. I definitely wouldn't want to be around Mr. Crocker. Oh, God. Laszlo would be fun, but Laszlo gets bored. Sure. What are we going to do now, being scouts? <laughs> um, Winslow from Cat Dog, no way. Let's go rip off something from a restaurant. Um, Rocco, for sure. He's the, just Definitely the Rocco. It's hard, it's hard to be mad at Rocco, right? No, it's just so likable. True. <laughs> if you want to take a nap, that's fine with me. So your daughters are obviously spoiled when it comes yes. to, to your skills and bringing that home and, and, and to putting that in your in your dad tool belt. Yes. Um, and you said that one of your daughters, is, is she's got the bug herself now, right? Yeah, she's working on an NDA Nickelodeon show. It's a pretty big show, and hopefully there'll be an announcement soon. She's working on a couple of DreamWorks things. And, and I think that comes from me, always doing voices and being goofy, and then watching Peppa Pig when she was a kid, and all these Australian YouTubers. Don't forget to like and comment down Good. below. Thanks for watching our show. Very early on, they, they love the package opening things, and we you know the, the, all the package stuff for little babies. So like today, Disney collectors are going to take this little toy, yeah. and uh, there we go. Look, it's oh, it's it's Elsa from Frozen. Hello, my name is Elsa, and so they're hearing this woman with her with her accent, and it's just they're soaking it in. Yeah, it's it's almost it's second nature almost. Yeah, so crazy. Okay, so with Reno nine one one recently making its triumphant return this time to yeah. Clippy. But what can you tell us about how that's changed now that it's on this much shorter format, especially like a sketch show like that? I think they found it, that it always worked because people were fans of the calls, you know, yeah. along with the soap opera of the show, people like the goofy calls, you know, you know, chasing the milkshake guy or uh, talking to Big Mike, who's doing something in front of his house. So it worked fine. They were able to get the gags and the gimmicks pretty hard and, and you know because of the budget bigger explosions bigger things it was fun to be back and put on the hot polyester again <laughs> go to pyru every morning you know just like the old uh, band picking up the instruments again and tuning them and starting to jam and play again it's exciting um anything that you'd like to to tell the fans that you're working on or anything you'd like to tell them just from the heart or whatever you need for dads and parents out there man when you think that you're alone, you're not, and it's hard, they'll live in the paycheck to paycheck. So I applaud those people, people on the front lines, 
that are parents and working in the hospitals or cops or EMTs, firemen, fire persons, uh, even people in restaurants or work at the supermarket and they're checking groceries, you know. Big shout out to everybody that keeps keeps us all going. Love it. Wise words from a from a veteran dad, you can tell. Yes. <laughs>